good afternoon everyone and i am delighted to welcome you all for our today's webinar on breaking down burnout recognizing the signs and seeking support hosted by our esteemed guest mr gaston de souza so in this today's webinar uh, i'll just like to give you an introduction to gaston gaston is a seasoned training specialty and a motivational speaker with over a decade and half of experience in the field his strong knowledge of soft skill and behavioral training coupled coupled with his genuine understanding of our participant profiles make him an invaluable resource for today's discussion so gaston has a unique ability to share real life experiences and infuse humor into his session keeping every audience engaged and inspired his interactive programs are known for their real world examples easy to understand concept and powerful role plays so without any further ado i invite gaston to lead us through this insight exploration of burnout and resilience so gaston over to you thank you so much um, ekta it's a really warm introduction it gets me all smiling i guess there is no workplace burnout not happening in my side at least uh let me just share my screen give me a moment please So good evening, everybody, and thank you very much for joining in. I know you guys have taken time out from your schedule and have volunteered for this very important topic called as uh, preventing workplace burnout. Now, um, I firmly believe before we finally go into the intricate details about how do we pre prevent uh, workplace burnout, I'd like to draw your attention to the chat in the event you've got someone something that you want to share with me. Can please always share to me. uh to chats um uh, the one thing that i always feel like identification is very very important and very crucial now burnouts may actually involve a person feeling useless or empty but for the ones to tell you all on a very honest level since i am into psychology burnout is not a medical diagnosis now before i begin all i do all that listen one of the things that i always do so i've got this if you can see it from my side i bottle in my hand and i've got a pen in the other now if i want to ask you all to put this pen inside this bottle of water without opening the cap or breaking or damaging the bottle if anyone can do it i would love to take him on a trip to or him or a, on a trip to paris Once again, the idea is this: the pen has got to go inside this bottle without opening the cap or breaking or damaging the bottle. Anyone? Well, many people they kind of put this pen behind this bottle and they tell me, "Well, sir, look at this. The pen is already inside." But my my instructions were quite clear. This pen has got to be inside this bottle without opening the cap. The only way you can do this is when you open the cap and let the pen inside. In a very similar manner, guys, nothing what I say will go inside your mind until and unless you open your mind and let the knowledge flow in. Having said that, I think it is perfect time for me to kind of go right ahead and um, uh, you know. Uh, begin our session preventing workplace burnout let me reiterate once again burnout is not a medical condition now many people think that depression is behind a burnout now burnout can risk depression but burnout and depression are different just like chalk and cheese and they require different treatments now certain personality traits may affect the risk of risk of burnout uh such as past work experiences um and so on and so forth and that is the reason why if there are two people having a similar situation one may undergo burnout the other may not and for that let me take you to a journey of this slide have a look at this slide guys i am going to skim to the surface in terms of the first couple of of slides and then i will go into detail about what burnout can actually be now have a look at these questions 
do you drag yourself to work let's identify uh, if you are really suffering from a job burnout now the first question you've got to ask yourself do you drag yourself to go to work do you have trouble getting started is it hard for you to focus on your job tough times you feel irritated are you using food some some people they fall back on food some people they fall back on drugs some people they fall back on alcohol that is just to numb the feeling or feel better so are you a victim of all this are you falling back into eating a lot of food or completely stopping to eat food are you getting into drugs are you getting into alcohol just to feel numb or feel better have your sleep habits changed in job burnout the symptoms a lot of people they have their sleep ha- habits completely changed they have staggered sleep is that your case as well do you suffer from physical ailments of headaches stomach or maybe bowel issues um abs that is ibs that is irritable bowel syndrome or any physical complaints with no possible cause is that what you're going through well if that's the case have a look at the next one these can be the possible causes of workplace burnout the first is lack of control now not having a say in your job your schedule your assignments your workload your personal life can actually lead to burnout not having to know what you need to do in your work when you go into work and if you're completely disorganized that can be a cause of burnout because that only means you're completely lacking control of your job the next one lack of clarity about what is expected out of you now if you're not very sure whether your boss or the others they want from you um, and you don't then likely feel you're like good, doing a good job at times you go haphazardly in doing something without knowing what is exactly that the boss wants is that the case with you do you frequently always and always fight with others maybe it can be an office bully do you feel that your co-workers are against you a lot of people in psychology have this very common syndrome that everybody hates me my co-workers are against me my boss makes me too involved in my work these conflicts can actually lead to stress which is the primary cause of burnout the next thing do you have too much too much on your plate that you can't manage or do you have too little on your plate because your boss thinks or some of your supervisor thinks or your manager thinks that this is too you can't not fit to do a lot of work maybe your job is boring maybe it's so it's so demanding that you cannot keep up with these demands you require a lot of energy to stay focused it can lead to fatigue and therefore burnout do you lack support if you're alone alone at work everybody is kind of focus is uh, this kind of sharing their work with you you cannot say no do you lack support all this while you might then feel stressed and the final one is the problem with work life balance because of which all your work takes so much of time and if i may ask you how many of you would put your hands up if i say the first thing that you do in the morning rather than say good morning to your family is the first thing that you is pick up your cell phone and check your daily assignments is that the case maybe your work takes so much of a time that you barely have time to kiss your, your son or your daughter to sleep or maybe say hi to them when they wake up but you are busy in your work is that the case with you all your energy is being taken care of by your work that you have no time for the family let's go to what this may cause and then we will go to how do we prevent workplace burnout we'll identify the causes and we'll discuss at length what does it cost it cost exactly what just like the dinosaur to your left side of the screen or the right side your job might possibly cost you feeling drained 
you completely feel sapped of energy you completely feel isolated you completely feel alone you have got no strength to even do your job or for that matter even pay attention to your family you are not able to sleep isomnia you are not able to sleep you are completely not focused what does it cost you it also costs you to be very sad angry irritable or don't care or not to care at all is this what job burnout is costing you is the question you've got to ask yourself is anger becoming a predominant feature of your personality is being sad is being generally dejected about so many things is that what people call you as irritating at every point of time is that what is it is costing you is the the burnout causing you to use alcohol or any other means of intoxication because of which have you visited the doctor where you felt palpitation high blood pressure of type 2 diabetes have a look at the screen guys and now we'll discuss at length but have a look at the screen do you feel drained are you not able to sleep are you constantly dejected very sad are you constantly angry at small small things do you kind of get that anger out out on your family are you constantly getting irritated you're constantly feeling and not caring are you using alcohol any other means of intoxication because of which have you developed heart disease type 2 diabetes or high blood pressure this has compromised on your immune system and the professional consequences are what you can see on your screen now job dissatisfaction withdrawing from colleagues and friends inability to do your job well drain on the company's resources now all that we have discussed in the last five slides if that is all that you are going through well i think you've come to the right session because we've got just a way to help you prevent workplace burnout and because of which i'll take you on the ways to beat workplace burnout i would love you to have a paper and a pen maybe you can possibly write down i'll wait for a couple of minutes write down whatever i say because this is definitely going to help you for your future please write this down एक हिंदी में कहावत है कि जब तक वक्त है अपने आप को संभाल लो हिंदी में कहावत है कि जब तक वक्त है अपने आप को संभाल लो अगर वक्त ने आपको संभाल लिया तो बहुत तकलीफ होगी मैं रिपीट मैसेल वंस अगेन जब तक वक्त है अपने आप को संभाल लो अगर वक्त ने आपको संभाल लिया तो बहुत तकलीफ होगी लेट मी शेयर विद यू सम वेज टू बीट बर्न आउट राइट वर्क प्लेस बर्न आउट experts say that that for a person to be really healthy you've got to have healthy relationships you got to have a creative life you got to have a spiritual life you got to have a proper professional life you got to have a healthy sex life you got to have a great financial life you got to have a healthy environment and you've got to have a healthy mind let me repeat myself once again you for a healthy relationship for a good life you got to have a creative life you got to have a spiritual life you got to have a professional life you got to have a healthy sex life you got to have a perfect financial life or a good financial life you got to have a healthy environment in the office and back at home and you got to have a healthy mind the first thing that you've got to do is please understand what is stress a lot of people ask me how do you manage stress and for me this is what i always reply just like the great guru sadguru said that we manage things that we love we manage family we manage money we manage relationships things that we love is what we manage how many of you guys love stress but i'm sure not many will have their hands up and if you don't love stress then why do you want to manage it let me repeat myself once again we manage things that yes akash i'm sure um, i know akash this is the way it goes but let me let me share with you a, a very important factor right now um 
If there are any questions, Akash, we can definitely take them toward the end of the session. But as of now, let's talk about stress, right? Now, how many of you guys, um, you know, believe in the fact that it's very important for you to have a creative life, a spiritual life, a wonderful professional life, a healthy sex life, an excellent financial life, a healthy environment, and a healthy mind? If you think that you are, that you should be having all this, please raise your hand, just like the way Akash did. Excellent. Excellent. I think there are many others who are raising their hands because it strikes a chord into everything else. And guys, if we manage love, if we manage relationships, if we manage finance, if we manage family, if we manage good relationships, why do you want to manage stress? And that is the reason why it is important for us to understand what is stress in reality. And that is the reason why. Let me share with you a uh, share with you a story. And there were a bunch of ladies who actually went to a restaurant. And remember, whenever these ladies they come together after a hard day's work and you know the pressure from family, they decided to, they are going to go out and completely chill and have fun. Ladies, I'm sure you love that, don't you? Right. So about 20, 30 ladies, they went to a restaurant and they were having fun. They were enjoying themselves. They were singing and they were dancing uh, and they were singing songs. They were cracking jokes and they were smiling. There was laughter everywhere. 20, 30 minutes into all these happy, good, lucky happenings, one lady saw a cockroach. The moment the lady saw a cockroach, all hell broke loose. There was pandemonium. Everybody was jumping up and down. They were shrieking and they were, they were shouting and they were screaming. One of them jumped on the table. The other called out to the manager. They were giving out the expletives. Come here, you moron. They said, look at what's happening out here. This is disgusting. How can a cockroach come out here? And they were shrieking and they were running out. The manager came running, running, running. Saw the cockroach. Picked up a tissue picked up the cockroach and threw it out. My question to all of you is this. If the manager, if the ladies were stressed by looking at the cockroach, why was the manager not stressed by looking at the cockroach? How can one factor cause stress to someone and the same factor not cause stress to the other? If you agree with what I'm saying, please raise your hand. There we go. Sri Jayanti has raised the hands, or so many of them. Antara has raised the hands, and so many of them. So the question again is, how can one cockroach cause stress to the ladies, and the same cockroach cannot cause stress to the others? And this is where we come to the question, what is stress in reality? So let me redefine what is stress, and maybe you will agree to what I'm saying. Stress is nothing, but it is your inability to deal with a particular situation. Let me repeat myself once again. Stress is nothing, but it is your inability to deal with a particular situation. The ladies could not deal with that situation and that is the reason why they were screaming and they were shouting and they were scared. The manager could deal with the situation and that's the reason why he was as calm as a cucumber. Let's identify stress once again, guys. Stress is nothing. Think about it. Stress is nothing. It is your inability to deal with a situation. Say, for example, one of you, like Himadri Shekhar has raised the hand. Himadri, say, for example, I come to your house for food. And Himadri says, Gaston, come in a while, cook some nice food for you. And I go to Himadri's house and she serves me some great food. Now, all of a sudden, Ekta says, you know what, Gaston, why do you want to go alone? Even I want to come with you. Now, instead of me, Himadri has got to cook for two people. She says, all right, fine, doesn't matter. Vijay says, and Kathi Ravan says, guys, you know what? It's not fair that even you all two want to go. Even I want to come in. And he must be, and, and you know, he must be, it's fine. It's all right. Perfect. Come on, all four of you come in. But she's slightly getting stressed now. All of a sudden, 10 more people join and saying, you know what? It's not fair. For the burnout session, we all were there. Then why only y'all four have got to go to Himadri's house? So everybody joins in and now she gets really stressed. 
it was easy for her to cook food for one person but now since there are more people it will be difficult for her and that's where the stress lies she will not be able to handle handle the pressure of cooking for so many but all 50 of us go to a restaurant do you think the chef will be stressed on looking at all 50 of us i'm sure the chef will not be so possibly himadri cannot handle the situation of cooking of 50 people at one point of time while the chef of a restaurant can easily cook and that's one we redefine stress stress is nothing but it is your inability to handle a particular situation ab ever guys let me also help you with something important stress can be your friend and remember your body supports you into stress whatever your mind says is what your body believes whatever your mind says is what your body believes if your mind says the situation is stressful your body will believe and act accordingly when you get stressed your heart starts pounding you break into a sweat but these are the very signs to tell you that your body has started to prepare itself for taking on any challenge your heart heart pounding only means there will be now more blood to your body your all the cells of the body will get more oxygen which gets you prepared for handling the difficult situation sweating only means it is allowing your body to cool down if your body temperature is raised because of stress sweat will allow your body to cool down this is a body trying to tell you i am prepared for the stress your mind has now got to be prepared to and remember guys more than anything else if any situation is something you're not prepared please control your mind rather than your mind control you i'll tell you how your mind works an example there are there are two or three people there are there are four people who have gone for lunch all four are pure vegetarians they have gone for lunch now the bearer says the waiter says they serve food they all eat food the waiter says sir i'm really sorry i i we did a very big mistake in one plate instead of paneer we served you chicken and you all ate that the ones who are pure vegetarians will immediately start puking let me repeat myself once again if all four vegetarian friends have gone to a restaurant for lunch they have ordered for paneer and they eat what is served to them and then the waiter comes and says sir we are really sorry which is a very big mistake one of you has got the bowl of chicken and the person who has had that immediately starts puking and after 5 minutes the waiter says sorry sir it was a prank you only ate paneer the question is the question is if there was only paneer instead of chicken why did the person puke the person puked because the mind told the body there is something wrong inside something which is not should be eaten has and the man has eaten so it is take it out of your body and the body immediately responds so what you tell your mind is what your mind will customize your body to do and that is why i'm saying let your mind control your body and remember again remember control your you've got to control your mind otherwise if the mind controls you it's going to be very very difficult very very difficult well if you think what i've saying is making sense uh, let's let's have a show of hands please thank you shujanti all right so many of them thank you very much guys thank you thank you All right. Having talked, spoken about stress, let's go to the. We already in thirty minutes into our session, but having spoken about say, stress, let's let's go into a different mode altogether, right? Thank you, Sandhya. Thank you, Ajit. Uh, you know your your responses help me go further. Up. Let's talk about the next thing that we're talking about, and this is this is something which is prevalent everywhere. Understanding time management. 
One of the most common causes of of workplace burnout is people saying, "Well, you know what, Gaston, um, we don't have enough time." I am telling you, instead of twenty four hours, if I give you twenty six hours, would you do anything different? Let me repeat myself. Instead of twenty four hours for the ones who complain about time, instead of twenty four hours, if I give you twenty six, would you do anything different? I doubt. I doubt for a fact. But the question is, how many of you guys believe in time management? If you believe in time management, please type a yes onto the chat box. All right. Perfect. Now, Arya, Naruna, and uh, Venkatesh. Okay, difficult to take everybody's name. So you, you guys says, um, okay, you believe in time management now. How many of you guys can control time? How many of you can stop the watch right now? Stop the watch at exactly four four two. Can someone do it? Please type it in the box. Can you stop time? Pratiksha says no. She Jayanti says no. Ajay says no. Well, if you can't stop time, how can you manage it? Correct. Correct, Shujaanti. Correct, Subramanian. If you cannot stop time, then then what is this term of time management? Yeah. A lot of people get stressed because they can't manage time, है ना? तो अगर time अगर आप time को रुका नहीं सकते, आप time को रोक नहीं सकते, तो time को manage कैसे करोगे? Okay, manage with time, prior prioritizing things. Any more answers, Pratiksha? Anybody? Anybody else? So, Sri Jayanti says to accomplish what I said to do uh, according to the set time. So, to accomplish what I said to do, which means, are you managing time? or are you managing your own self which means which means a lot of people are saying yes raising their hands which means it is self management and never time management let me repeat myself once again दोस्तों बहुत बार ऐसे होता है कि हम लोग किसी किसी चीज को अपने आप को दोष देते हैं कि टाइम मैनेजमेंट टाइम नहीं होता है हमारे पास टाइम ही नहीं होता कि डोंट टाइम टाइम मजा कर मजा कर वेलेस नहीं है मतलब हे करा वो लगता मतलब ते करा वो लगता मुझे वक्त नहीं मिलता आई कैन नॉट मैनेज टाइम आई फाइन टाइम आई शॉर्ट गाइज यू कैन नॉट मैनेज टाइम बिकॉज टाइम इज नॉट इन योर हैंड्स बट वॉट यू कैन मैनेज इज योर ओन सेल्फ and once you manage your own self your time will automatically be managed so it is few times saying that i am feeling i am feeling uh, no, i am i am experiencing workplace burnout uh thank you shujay and yes i am i am experiencing workplace burnout why because i can't manage time you've got to manage your own self once you start managing your own self your time will automatically be managed which means there will be no burnout at all having said that let's go to the next slide guys it is very very important for y'all to establish clear boundaries it is very crucial it is very important i have always said this to people in the course of my I have my trainings when I do personal interactions, when I do corporate trainings. I have always told this to people, always and always. Your mind can make you a king, but it can also make you a pauper. Please establish clear boundaries. Do not let your loyalty to others become your slavery. Sometimes, remember, guys. if your house does not a garden does not have a boundary any intruders will come and invade your privacy if you don't establish boundaries within yourself every individual will require to have a boundary otherwise anybody can come in and invade your privacy if anyone would you like people to come and sit in a bedroom to do whatever they want to your bedrooms have got a wall don't they would you like outsiders to come and sit in your house if they want to your house have got walls don't they it is very important for you all to understand to prevent workplace burnout you've got to establish clear boundaries sometimes a no is 
or no. Sometimes, maybe you might want to put it in a very diplomatic way, in very clear terms. Diplomatic but firm. Sometimes a no is a no. It is very crucial. It is very important. It is very crucial for you all to understand, guys. Sometimes when you say no to others, you're only pretending yourself. Antara has got a question that says, what is the boundary and how do we establish it? Your boundary is your own choice, Antara. If you're okay with people coming and invading you, invading your, your privacy, then I think you've got to set your own boundaries. I will not allow my clients or my people to call me post 9 p.m. I do not allow my clients and my people to call me post 9 p.m. I do not allow my clients and my command for trainings to, uh, they can, they can of course chat with me, but sometimes when I'm going out for a family party, I'm going for a movie, I'm with my wife for an, for an, uh, with my wife, my children for a, for a, for a, for dinner, I will not answer calls until, unless it is of life threatening importance. These are my boundaries. You've got to decide. आप कहां तक किसी को टॉलरेट कर सकते हो अगर फॉर एग्जांपल अगर कोई आपका मजाक उड़ा रहा है तो आप लोग हंसते हो खेलते हो इट्स गुड टू बी जोवियल राइट लेकिन अगर उस मजाक से आपकी मानसिक स्थिति में तकलीफ होती है प्लीज टेल देम गाइस यू नो व्हाट यू नो दिस इज गुड मजाक मजाक ठीक है बट प्लीज डोंट बी पर्सनल ऐसे बोलने में कोई दिक्कत नहीं है एस्टैब्लिश क्लियर बाउंड्रीज एंड बाउंड्रीज के लिए एक सोच की जरूरत है बाउंड्रीज के लिए वर्क प्लेस बनाउट के लिए एक सिर्फ एक सोच की जरूरत है आई विल शेयर विथ यू अ स्टोरी ऑफ नो पर्सन एक बंदा था जो गाय जो जो पॉट कुंभार था कुंभार नो पॉट तो ही वॉज ही वॉज मेकिंग वॉज मेकिंग चिल्लम है ना वो चिल्लम बना रहा था तो चिल्लम बना रहा था वो वो मट्टी को गूद रहा था एनी वर्क वॉज मेकिंग मेकिंग विच यू कुड मेक चिल्लम तो इज वाइफ आस्क थे मोडा यू डूइंग मंथ है मे का महीने मैं जा रहा हूँ यू नो मैं चिल्लम बना रहा हूँ तो आजकल इसका बहुत डिमांड है चिल्लम बहुत बिकेगी तो यू नो बहुत पैसे मिलेंगे तो उसके वाइफ ने कहा यार तुम चिल्लम बना रहे हो चिल्लम के बदले सुराही बना लो एक पॉट बना लो पॉट मटका जो होता है एक पॉट बना लो तो पॉट में क्या पानी भरा जाएगा समर का सीजन भी है लोग पानी भी शीतल रहेंगे तो पानी से पानी भी बहुत मटका भी बहुत बिकेगा और उस बंदे ने वो बात तो ठीक है उस बंदे ने क्या किया उस मिट्टी में वापस पानी डाल दिया तो चिल्लम बनाने से बंदी और गूंदने लगा और उस मट्टी को मटके एक सुराही में मटके में बदलने लगा तो कहते हैं कि मिट्टी से आवाज आई फ्रॉम दट मड दे केम आउट अ वॉइस कि क्या कर रहा है और उस कुमार ने उस उस मट्टी को कहा कि मैं मैं एक सुराही बना रहा हूं मैं एक मटका बना रहा हूं तो उस मिट्टी ने कुमार से कहा कि अब क्यों मटका बना रहे पहले तो चिल्लम बना रहा था तो उस कुंभार ने जो कहा आप लेके जाइए तो कुंभार ने कहा कि पहले मैं चिल्लम बना रहा था ठीक है अब मैं मटका बना रहा हूं अगर चिल्लम बनाता तो उसमें आग भरी जाती खुद भी जलता और दुनिया को भी देता अभी सुराही बना रहा हूं अभी मटका बना रहा हूं उसमें पानी भरूंगा मटका भी शीतल रहेगा और दुनिया को भी शीतल कर देगा तो उस मिट्टी ने उस कुमार से एक डायलॉग बोला कि तुमने तो सिर्फ एक विचार बदली किया एक एक थॉट बदली किया तुम्हारे थॉट से तुम्हारे थॉट बदली हो गया लेकिन मेरी तो जिंदगी बदली होगी तुम्हारी सोच बदल दिया तुमने लेकिन तुम्हारी सोच से मेरी जिंदगी बदल दी फिल्म शेयर विथ यू अगेन देर वॉज पॉटर वॉज मेकिंग वॉज मेकिंग द चिल्लम यू नो दैवस टबैको एंड स्टफ नाउ यू वॉज यू वॉज मेकिंग चिल्लम यू वॉज यू वॉज काइंड ऑफ यू नो मोल्डिंग द मड एंड ऑल ऑफ सर इज वाइफ केम एंड सेट वट आर यू डूइंग वाई यू मोल्ड वाई यू डूइंग दिस यू थिंक आई वॉन्ट टू मेक दिस चिल्लम बिकॉज वेन आई सेल दैट चिल्लम टू पीपल आई विल गेट लॉट ऑफ मनी एंड इज वाइफ सेट डोंट डू वाई यू सेलिंग चिल्लम इज हॉट राइट सो डू दिस मेक पॉट्स वेन यू मेक पॉट्स you know people will store water into it and then you know it will be nice you also get a lot of money by selling pots and the potter said right and the potter started once again you know putting water and he got the entire mud he started making pots from the mud they came out a voice and saying what are you doing and the man the potter said i am making a pot now saying why do why are you making pot saying my thought process changed and the and the lady the the mud said earlier i was making making a chillum 
I would stuff fire into it to smoke. I would get burnt and I would burn the world. But now I am making a pot. I will pour water into it. I will remain cool and the world will also remain cool because I will quench people's thirst. The mud said, well, you only change your thought, but because you change your thought, my life completely changed. So guys, one thought can change your complete outcome, especially burnout. Please make sure that once you think of establishing clear boundaries, people will respect them. Initially, they might be a to and fro. Or people might possibly get angry on you, but so be it. Are you here to please people or are you here to maintain a cool and focus your thought, your decide? Let's go to the next one. Please prioritize self-care. It is very, very important, guys, for you all to understand. Please prioritize self-care. Now, self-care only means or rather also could mean you've got to take care of your own self. When was the last time you actually went back, sat on your chair and thought that, well, it's 10 minutes to my own self. Have you guys done that? If you have not done that, please wake up and smell the coffee. It is very important. It is not wrong at all that if you are earning a thousand rupees per day, you spend 200 rupees for your own self. Let me repeat myself once again. It is not wrong that if you are earning a thousand rupees per day, you got to spend 200 rupees for your own self. While you're getting an entire bottle of Coke for your family, it is not wrong for you to spend 20 rupees in buying a sugarcane juice for your own self. The problem with most of us, we let our loyalty become a slavery. We let our loyalty to others become a slavery. How many of you agree with the statement? Please type a yes on the chat box. We let our loyalty to others become our slavery. Arya says yes. Aruna says yes. That's the problem with most of us. We bend down backwards to please people. What we do is, we do everything what is required so that people are happy, but nothing what is required so that you are satisfied. Let me repeat myself once again. We do everything what is required for people to be happy, but nothing what is required for you to feel satisfied. A sincere request to all of you, please do not let your loyalty to others become your slavery. Let me share with you, and if you like what I'm saying the next one minute, uh, show me a thumbs up, right? If you're giving all to a person, if you're giving your all to a person and the person still thinks it is not enough, then I feel you're giving it to a wrong person. If you're giving your all to a person and it is still not enough, then you're giving it to the wrong person. If you think what I'm saying is making sense, show me a thumbs up, please. Maybe, maybe a lot of my words are very hard hitting. But remember, I'm here to help you prevent workplace burnout. And if out of all the people that are here listening to what I'm saying, I can, I can help at least maybe 15, 20 people prevent workplace burnout. I think my job is done. It's important, guys, to take a break. It is important to take a holiday. It is important to go to the movies. It is important to sit down and do nothing. Your attitude towards yourself matters a lot. The moment your brain starts believing that your life is meant for others, your brain will start believing it and your body will respond accordingly. It is so important. It is so important, it's so crucial. I'll tell you how the brain works. I will tell you how the brain works. If, if you go to a doctor, God forbid, and the doctor gives you a white colored tablet, 
right? A pink color tablet and a blue color tablet. And you, you swallow it. With water, you swallow it. The most effective is the white color tablet. And the blue and the pink color tablets are nothing. They're only meant as accompaniments, which a lot of doctors do. But your mind is believing. And that's what psychology says, that you believe that the pink and the blue color tablet will actually work for you. When in reality, it is the white color tablet which is working for you. The placebo effect is right, student, correct. It's called as the placebo effect. If the brain believes, it will communicate with all the cells in your body via hormones and neurotransmitters. The moment you start prioritizing self-care, the moment you start establishing clear boundaries, you mark my words, your workplace burnout automatically is divided into a half. The problem is, most of us, we nourish our bodies from the neck down, wherein ideally, we should be nourishing our bodies from the neck up. So guys, very important, very crucial for you all, prioritize self-care. The next thing I'm going to talk about uh, is a very important factor, and this is what learn to say no. Have a look at the slide. The cow is head up in the air and walking, just walking out. It is important to say no. Remember, if you drink from every cup that is given to you, that is exactly how you will get poisoned. Let me repeat myself once again. If you drink from every cup that is given to you, that's exactly how you will get poisoned. Poisoned. Please learn to say no. It is very important for you all to understand that in the event you will say no, no does not mean you are disrespecting the other person. No only means it is just beyond your capacity and scope of work. However, However, if you choose to say no, you can choose to say no diplomatically so that the other person does not feel offended. I can easily say, say no, doesn't really matter. Kuch nahi farak padta. How does it matter? Remember, it's you. Guys, it's important for today's world to have a job and to take care of a job as well. So if you're learning to say no, please say no diplomatically and explain. An example. I was working for Bank of America about five, six years ago. So when I was given a certain amount of work, a certain amount, like say, for example, for the matter, even now, uh, if I'm, if I'm, I'm a corporate trainer, I'm an inspirational speaker. So when I am given a lot of work to do, at times I tell my clients, no, this is what I can do. And this is what I cannot. Why? I've got only one hour. I've got two hours. I've got three hours for training. If I cram all the information into one slide and I'm not be able to do justice to all these points, do you think the impact will be, will be, will be good? And they said, no, I said, in that case, I will do only so much. Maybe the next time when we have more time, I can, of course, accommodate the other points too. I learn, I have learned to say no. No does not mean disrespecting the person. It only means you hold your value of sanity and you want to hold it for a long time to come. How many of you promise me that from now on, if things are beyond your scope and if whatever is told to you is weighing large on your mind, you promise to say no diplomatically. If you say, if you are agreeing with me, show me a thumbs up or give me a yes on the, on the, on the chat box. Thank you, Preetam. Thank you, Amala. Thank you, Pratiksha. Thank you, Sai. Yep, so many of them. Perfect. And which is where we come to almost the last end, guys. It's time for you to prioritize fun. Have a look at that. There are balloons everywhere. It's important for me to prioritize fun. Very crucial, very important. So much important, so much crucial. Very, very amazing. You know what? So I'll tell you what, how does it work? And if you want to smile, if you want to smile, um, let me share with you something that, that's so important, right? We, have, we, are, we are a good audience. Uh, I remember distinctly well, 
that, you know, so, you know, children, I'm talking about children, children are so obedient, right? But my son, me and my wife, we always fight about whom does my son love? Son loves me, which is his father, or um, loves his mother, right? So how many parents fight for this? Whether my son loves me or, or, or my wife? How many parents fight? Do you all do that? Give me a yes on the chat box. If parents fight. Yeah. All right. Okay. So this is what we were, me and my wife are fighting about, right? We wanted to find out who does my son love. There my son was in one corner and uh, we took a small pebble, a small pebble to throw it at my son. Uh, if he says mummy, which means he loves his mother more. If he says daddy, which means he loves his father more. There was in one corner, we took a small pebble and threw it at my son. The pebble hit my son and he turned behind and said, who is that idiot? It's important, guys, to have fun in everyday life. It's so crucial. It is so important. It is so amazing. And trust me, humor in the right sense can make a difference to your life big time. I'm married for the last 25 years. And trust me, the one important factor that has kept me from turning insane is, of course, humor. And if I may add, if I may add to this, if I may add to this, um, you know, and as I mentioned earlier, we are an adult audience, right? So uh, now this is what we've got to interact very quickly, right? Before I finally close. Now, how many of you guys have suffered at least once from stress? Type in the box stress. At least once. At least once from stress, multiple times, okay? How many of you guys have suffered from pressure? Pressure, work pressure, type pressure, or type P in the box? Okay. How many of you guys have suffered from um, 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 tension, type T? Oh, so many, gosh. How many of you guys have suffered from hypertension at least once, type H? Okay. Listen to me very carefully. I have different definitions for all of these. According to me, stress is when you have a girlfriend and you're already married. Pressure is when you have a girlfriend, you're already married, and your girlfriend is pregnant. Tension is when you have a girlfriend, you're already married, your girlfriend is pregnant, and your wife is also pregnant. And hypertension is when you're married, your girlfriend is pregnant, your wife is pregnant, and you've been out of the country for the last two years. And now if I may ask you, how many of you are suffering from stress and pressure? You will not say a word, will you? Guys, prioritize fun. It is so important and so necessary and so, so unique. So when you have fun, remember guys, keep one thing in mind. <laughs> Thank you, Pratiksha. Thank you, Kirti. The smile is explained so much. So whenever you have fun, guys, remember your fun should not be at the cost of putting people down. Your fun should not be at the cost of putting people down, but your fun should be at the cost of making you feel nice, of making you feel happy. Your fun has got to be at the cost of making people feel nice and special. But remember, guys, humor is one thing that will always leave you in good stead. All right. Now, with that, we come to the end of our session. It is, it, I would love to ask you all guys, if you all think that this session has added a little value to your life, uh, uh, please show me a thumbs up. All right. So what we'll do is this. Very quickly, we'll just do a small revision, a small recap about what we've learned throughout in the last one hour. Okay. We're talking about workplace burnout. Uh, we spoke a lot about the job burnout symptoms. We spoke that you, whether you're dragging yourself to work, you have trouble getting started. Is it hard to focus on your job? Are you using food and drugs or alcohol to make you feel better? Have your sleep habits changed? Have you, do you have headaches, stomach or bowel problems? Is that job burnout symptoms? The next thing that we spoke about were the causes of burnout, which is, which is lack of control, lack of clarity in what's expected, conflicts with others, too much or too little to do, lack of support, problems with work-life balance. Then we spoke about what does all these cost you? We spoke about you feeling drained, you feeling not able, you're not able to sleep, uh, you are sad, you're angry, you're irritable, you're not caring, uh, you use 
alcohol or other means of intoxication because of which you have developed heart disease, high blood pressure or type 2 diabetes. Right? Then we spoke about the professional consequences. One is job dissatisfaction, withdrawing from colleagues and friends, inability to do your job well, drain, if then because of that you are a drain on a company's resources. And then we decided on ways to be uh, to beat uh, burnout, understanding stress. We decided what is stress, what is not. Um, we also uh, understanding time management. If it's time management or self-management, we spoke about um, establishing clear boundaries. Important for you to establish boundaries. We spoke about um, prioritizing self-care. And we also sp spoke about uh, how to learn to say no. And we spoke about of prioritizing fun. Now, guys, towards the end, let me leave you in a thought. In the present, Rajnikanth has got a session. Thank you, Shalini. Uh, in his present corporate working style, can we expect a work-minded boss to be also fun-minded? You can. 110% you can. Sometimes it is important for you to buff again, diplomatically, to let your peers, your colleagues, your bosses, your managers, supervisors know that all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. I am very sure your bosses understand too. My bosses did. My bosses did big time. Towards the end, let me leave you with two thoughts. One is please understand the only way to appreciate your job is to imagine yourself without one. Let me repeat myself once again. The only way to appreciate your job is to imagine yourself without one. Many people complain of workplace burnout. And then when I question them or when I probe further, they tell me that they have mixed their personal problems with their professional work. And then they blame professional work as the causes of workplace burnout. Your professional life and your personal life have got to be poles apart. If you're fighting with your wife or you're fighting with your family, and if that same anger is what you get into your work, then guys, your work will definitely give you a hard burn. Please learn how to control your mind. And I will give you an exercise to control your mind. Let me help you with that very quickly before you find it cold today. People ask me, how do I control my mind? I'll tell you what to do. Listen to me very carefully, guys. Listen to me very, very carefully. Um, there are two ways in which you can control your mind. One, go in the gallery, go out in the gallery and decide for yourself for five minutes, you will not look down. All right. For five minutes, you will not look down. You are in the gallery. For five minutes, you will not look down. What will happen? You will look down. Do it for every day. Do it every day for 10 minutes every day. Slowly and steadily, you will automatically tell, don't look down. That's it. Nine, no is no. What will happen? Nothing will happen. The next month, decide that when you're driving, when you're driving for 10 minutes, you will not listen to music or will not look here and there. One day, it was not possible. Second day, not possible. Third day, not possible. Fifth day, seventh day, tenth day, then slowly and steadily, you will look straight while you're driving, you will not look here and there. Third month, right? Third month. Decide that for one full day or maybe for two hours, you will not open up Facebook and Instagram. For two hours, you will not open up Facebook and Instagram. One day it will be difficult for you. You will kind of at least sneak peek. Second day will be difficult. At the end of the 10th or the 12th day for two hours, you will manage not to open up Facebook and Instagram. Nothing will happen. But slowly and steadily, you are telling your mind that I will not listen to you. I will listen to my mind. You are allowing your mind to take control of your life. Rather, the mind telling you what to do. Now you are telling the mind, don't look down, don't look around there, no Facebook, because you are becoming firm. Slowly the mind realizes that, man, this guy is getting serious. This guy is amazing. This guy will do what he wants to do. So then a mind will come to your end. Try this, guys. Trust me, it works. Trust me, it works. The second rule is called as a rule of accountability. 
uh, in workplace how many of you guys are how many of you guys are feeling are feeling you know they'll feel the workplace burnout all right habit for discipline yes pradeep how many of you guys feel the discipline how many of you feel the workplace burnout because you feel the pressure coming into you why because you're not you're not um, yeah, you're not you're finding it difficult to to leave smoking how many of you find difficult to leave smoking show me a yes in the chat box how many of you guys find it difficult to to leave leave drinking type a yes in the chat box please How many of you guys are finding it difficult to get up early in the morning at five o'clock? Type a yes. I will. I will share with you something that will help you tomorrow. Listen to me carefully. Now, Surajit Chinnia possibly shares that. I, I, maybe I'm guessing that Surajit finds it difficult to get up in the morning. Surajit, tomorrow morning, set the alarm for five o'clock. Set the alarm for five in the morning, and then. when the alarm rings at 5 in the morning you press the snooze button you press the snooze button correct and you get up at 6:30 or 7 whenever your daily time is so right now you get up in the morning at 7 o'clock you say oh gosh i was supposed to wake up at 5 o'clock i have got up at 7 punish yourself by taking a 200 rupee note from your wallet and tearing it apart Take a two hundred rupees from your wallet and tear it because you did not honor your commitment. The next day morning again, you'll you'll set the alarm for five o'clock in the morning. Uh, the alarm alarm starts shouting. Please wake wake up, wake up, wake up. Surajit does not get up in the morning at five. He gets up at six thirty. Oh God! I should have woken up at five o'clock. I set the alarm. Take two hundred rupees from your wallet and tear it apart. On the third day, I can bet my bottom dollar. Surajit will not get up at five o'clock. He'll get up at four thirty. It's called as the law of accountability. Sai, because it is not possible because you're not doing it. Try doing it, and trust me, you will not smoke again. I have done that. I have done a lot of people. There was a guy who was in the habit of eating manik chand. So when I went to his house, he had invited me for dinner. When I when I when I went to his house, uh, he, after food, uh, there was a vegetarian food served. We had food. After food, he had the you know, the manchand. They have that small sachet. Uh, so I told him, give me two more sachets, and he he gave me two more. He was happy that I was joining him. I took one sachet, gave it to his four year old daughter, and one I gave it to his wife. I said, the moment. The moment you, the moment you do that, the moment he eats, has the sachet that manage some goodka, even the four-year-old daughter and even the wife, even you all have it. And he was aghast. He said, "What's wrong with you? How can they do that?" I said, "Well, if you are having poison, why can't they have the very fact that you are having poison right in front of them indicates that it is okay to have poison? Then why can't they have?" It's been three and a half years for that. The next day onwards, the man stopped eating goodka. I am not close to kidding, guys. It's called the law of accountability, All right? So I wish you a fantastic life ahead. Um, have have lots of fun. I I hope you'll have liked what I've shared. Uh, if there are any questions, I can uh, I can I can answer them right right now. If there are any questions, let me know, please. Thank you, Sangamitra. Thank you. Thank you, Pooja. Thank you, Surya. Uh, any questions? I can I can take them for you all. No, the uh, questions are not been posted yet, Gaston. If okay. anybody wants to even talk to Gaston, you can raise your hand. We will move to your panel, and you can uh, ask your queries directly with Gaston as well. If you want to share any things or any feedback, you can raise your hands here. I'll be more than happy to answer, guys. Please let me know. Yeah, I request everyone to take this benefit, and if you have any questions or you require any further assistance, you can just. Uh, Post it in a chat box or under the Q and A exam. Akash says, "Can you give me an example of how to okay. set a boundary?" Akash, I just shared that earlier. For me, if you ask me, um, <laughs> uh, somebody mentioned earlier, I am a people's pleaser. Now, the very fact that people's opinions don't pay your bills is enough for you to understand that if you keep on pleasing people, you will have no time for your own self. Right? How do we set? How do we set boundaries? Uh, I'll tell you about my ways. I'm not sure about others. I'll tell you about my ways. 
I remember distinctly well, uh, you know, in the quest for earning a lot of money, there was a point of time I used to take a lot of work. And then it was so difficult for me to travel cities uh, that I'm online tonight. I used to go travel in cities. It was, I used to exactly go right ahead and burn myself up knowing fully well I cannot pay heed to my clients. And that's when I sat down once. I distinctly remember that night of December 21st. I came back home absolutely, uh, you know, on absolutely, uh, you know, completely crestfallen. And that night I told them, my family, for a fact that I will now prioritize what is important. And from 2014 onwards, I have always kept my boundaries firm. And I've kept my boundaries low. I now take only only those trainings that I can manage to fulfill comfortably. Earlier it was morning, maybe in, in Mumbai, if you see, I so I have always seen I, I, I have also seen three airports in one day. But I used to burn myself up. But now, but now I have I have stopped doing a lot of work because I know I've got to set my boundaries. Sometimes it is difficult for you all to say no. Guys, you've got to learn to say no. It will not happen overnight, but it will happen for a fact. Arya says, any books you can read to understand more about dealing burnout? Um, Arya, there are a lot of things in the market that there will, some of them will suggest meditation. Some of them will suggest... Um, uh, you know, uh, coming back and, you know, having two or three hours for your own self. Some of them will suggest wo working out, exercise. But I'll suggest one very important thing. Your Google will always give you suggestions which are general. You've got to absorb those suggestions that will help you on a personal level. First, assess. Is it your personal life is affecting you? or your professional life. If it is personal life, behave accordingly. If it is professional life, behave accordingly. But do not mix your personal and professional life. Don't assess wrongly. That's how you get the wrong diagnosis. Thank you, Radhikant. There is one more question under the Q&A section. So here, uh, I mostly feel stressed and feared because of my manager. So how do how to handle this um okay there was a point of time i was in a call center i used to i used to extremely worry about manager what will he think about my work and then i also realized that i used to worry about what will he think about my work is because i was not very sure about if what i'm doing is right or wrong if the work that you're doing is right nobody can point fingers if the work that you're doing is not as per what you promise you will do, then the managers have got a right to question you because they are answerable higher up as well. Always remember, again, let me repeat, I'm talking about myself. I knew I was fearing my manager because I was my work was not accordingly what they wanted. Because when I went for when I when I was when I appeared for the interview, I told them I will do this and I will do that and I will not complain and I will do this. I was I was trying to I was lying. And then when I actually wanted to do what I had promised, I knew I had made a mistake. Sometimes it's very important. And guys, always remember there is nothing wrong in asking for help. If you think your work is not the way it should be. Please ask for help. Ask for help for one day, for two days, and then the remaining five days, do your work well. Rather than linger in the seven days, and all seven days, spoil your work. If you require, ask for help, please. Uh, there is one more uh, question. It's... Uh under the chat box, like I want to say no to my boss when there is too much on my table, but how to handle management when they utilize us to their benefits? The management guys will utilize you, they have benefit, but that's what management does. If I was to put you in charge of an organization, you will handle your workforce according to the according to what the, the will benefit the organization. So I think it's not right to complain. And I'm saying not right to complain. Let's not complain about if the management will utilize us to their benefit. They will do it, for sure. 
Because that's what they are paid to. That's what is their job. The question is, the question is, are they putting so much pressure on you that you cannot work well? Is that the case? Or are you not trained enough to do that work well? If you're not trained enough to do that work well, please ask for help so that you can work well and fulfill the expectations what you promised to the management. And if there's too much on your plate that you cannot handle, please put your foot down, tell them in very diplomatic and a very sweet voice, I would have loved to do what you want to do, but unfortunately, I've got so much on my plate. When I finish this, when I'll be able to complete this. Sometimes the truth will set you free in ways more than one. And and in, in all my experience, a major, and I'm being, guys, I'm being very open, I'm being very harsh, I know, right? But that's the truth. Sometimes what we do is Hamari Nakami Chupane ke liye, hum log management ko blame karte hai. To hide our inconsistent work practices is what we blame the management. So it is essential for you all. Um, hi, Gaston. I've been delivering content for the last three days without a break. Uh, but the manager wanted to extend my profile to other areas too. Context switching, I completely agree. Um, sometimes tell the manager. Not sometimes. Tell the manager that, sir, uh, I have been uh, without break for the last three weeks. I will now break down if I don't rejuvenate myself. Tell them, upfront, if you want me to perform, if you really want me to perform well, I will require to have a break for a couple of days. And then I can come recharge and I can do whatever you want me to do. Please tell them upfront. Otherwise, you will to, to, to be a people's pleaser or to, to please a manager, you will carry on doing that work and you will not be able to work effectively because, guys, remember, even a Tesla car requires to be charged once or twice a day or thrice a day. I mean, once or once in three days. You require to sleep for eight days, eight hours, six hours, five hours, whatever, but your body requires recharging. You cannot work like this. It's not possible. It's not human. And this is how workplace burnout happens. Uh, Workplace burnout happens, yes. I hope Kuldeep have answered that question. So guys, you've got a poll also live. If you think that this session has added a little value to your lives, you can please be, be as candid as possible. We'd love to hear uh, your, your feedback. Any other questions for me? End them, Kuldeep. Thank you, buddy. Arya says, any other books? Arya, there are a lot of books, self-help books. Uh, there are books from Shiv Kera. There are books from, um, you know, from Robin Sharma. And these are self-help books. They will always help you, uh, you know, do do better. And I I firmly believe that um, books are 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 the fuel to your soul. Books are the fuel to your soul. So there are many self-help books. Many of them. The monk, the monk of the Ferrari. Like who moved my cheese? Uh, the Alchemist. These are excellent books. So, Dustin, there are no more questions. Um, just now we received one more question. Like many times when we make a mistake in the work and the manager say indirectly of firing from the job. I understand. I understand the situation. I, I know how difficult it is. Um, you know, that um, that uh, some 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 people are harsh. Some people are harsh. They talk about they talk about uh, dismissal from the job. I understand, but not all of them do that. You know, these are, these are ways and means of scaring you into doing your work better the next time. Of course, if you're consistently doing a mistake, then there's a different thing altogether. Because a mistake made once is a mistake, a mistake made twice is a mistake, a mistake made thrice is your choice. How to share the inconsistent work habits of other people? Or not say about the commitment, but lots of others and straightforward to bring up and do the argument. Being honest is not wrong, but being diplomatic is better. Being honest is not wrong, but being diplomatic is better. Guys, remember, keep one thing in mind. It's sometimes in the, at the quest of being honest, we are perceived as arrogant, which is everywhere in the world. Honesty is best served on a platter with some nice amount of dressing. And that's why they say that a person, um, you know, um, uh, a person, a person with a sweet tongue can even sell chilies, but a person with a harsh tongue can't even sell honey. It's how you decide 
what you're going to do with your communication skills.